we would be talking about routing protocol and uh, what it is and uh, we will we will do some eigrp uh, practice today and also i'll show you guys uh, the emulator so this is where the uh, hands on labs are done and uh, for eigrp i will build up uh, a new section so that uh, you guys can uh, also have hands on uh, building uh, a lab or uh, let's say uh, to create your own topology and work upon it. So that is what I'm planning to do it. So how many of you are aware of uh, what is uh, routing protocol? What is routing protocol? What do you understand by routing protocol? Routing protocol are used uh, in router to decide uh, where the, uh, the route for data going, meaning incoming data and outgoing data using IP addresses. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else aware of uh, what is routing protocol? So let's say I have few uh, routers with me. Okay. And uh, let's say there are some test PC. This is PC1, PC2, PC3. Let's say they are uh, interconnected, might be there is a cable this way. Okay, so this is belonging to a different network 172.16.1. So and so, this is 192.168.1.24. Let's say this is uh, 192.168. 2.0/24 now these pcs are in different uh, network right different network in the sense they belong to a different set of ips so ranging between 192 1.0 till 255 so they are one set of network similar way over here if you see okay let me take this so similar way if you see here it is ranging between 192 168 1 24 and this is ranging between 172 16 1 so there are 254 users that can be in this particular network but across the network they cannot communicate to each other Let's say if PC1 wants to communicate to PC2 or PC2 wants to communicate to PC3, uh, it will not know how to reach there, right? So what is what is now enabled? We enable routing protocol. Why? Uh, why not to go with static IP? Do you, do you think I cannot go with this st static routing? What is static routing? Manually configuration the router routing. Yes. So I can do that. I can say that if PC1 wants to talk to PC2, then I can inform my router that by writing a static route, IP route towards uh, so and so destination from the gateway so and so. Let, let's say the next uh, gateway is this guy R2 uh, or something. Similar way, if the PC1 has to communicate with PC3, then I can put a static route here manually. But that is not that is not a practical approach in the enterprise because your network should be consisting of hundreds to thousands of different 
uh, networks, different users want to talk to another uh, user or server. So you cannot keep on writing the manual things on every um, every router. So that is why the dynamic routing protocols are being used which will make themselves as a neighbor and themselves as an election who is master, who is uh, secondary, who is DR, who is BDR. So they will go through their own election process. So there are few protocols that we are aware of. One of them is EIGRP. We have OSPF and we have RIP. So RIP is not used nowadays because of its... Uh, 16 hop and uh, due to the algorithm that it don't uh, encourage for a uh, for the uh, scaling purpose as well. So they, we don't much use RIP, it's obsolete in the market. We use EIGRP and OSPF. Now, how, how do we use this? We just enable these process on the routing protocol, on the routers. So let's say if I'm over here, I'll configure that. I'll configure it. Same, I'll do it over here. I'll configure the steps. And also, I will go here and I will enable this. That is all. I will just put my configuration only. Now, they will have a mechanism to keep sending the hello packets. Wherever I have enabled, they will start exchanging some hello packets. So, router one will say that this is my hello packet. I, I am aware of this network. The second router will say, this is my hello packet. I'm also part of EIGRP. This is the uh, parameter that I'm having. So first they will become a neighbor. They will become a neighbor. R1, R2, R3, they will become a neighbor. Then they will also exchange all that information that they are aware of. So R1 will say, I'm aware of this network. I'm aware of this network and also if there are any other network, it will say I'm aware of these three network and I'm sharing with you. Similar way, second router will also do the same thing. Now they have become neighbors and they start talking to each other. So in this process, they have exchanged all the network information, which network is behind which. Now what happens is when a user from the PC1 is trying to connect to PC10, where will PC1 first will go? It will go to its router. And in the routing, uh, in the inside the router, there is a process called routing table. And this is where all the routes are being stored, the best part. So R1 will be aware how to reach this PC. Might be it is over on two different routers. That's okay. We don't have to mention it manually. There, there is all this exchange and neighborship happened automatically. The routing protocol makes uh, the whole process to be very simplified by exchanging themselves, uh, by becoming neighbors, right? So you just ping PC1 and PC10. Uh, since the routers have become neighbors and they have exchanged all that information, the PC1 will con go to nearby router that is connected to it. Let's say if I'm initiating the ping packet, I want to ping, uh, let's say, 172.161.100, which is uh, over here. Okay, so my packet will first go to its gateway. So this is the gateway, which is nothing but a router. Now the router will check its routing table and then it will say, okay, to reach that, I have to send you via this. Now that will go to this. The response will come back to this. It will come back to this router and then it will come back to this PC. Okay, we can do it via static method, but that's a manual effort. You cannot keep writing manually hundreds of uh, static rules. So we will go with the dynamic routing protocol. So we have EIGRP, OSPF and uh, the other protocol like RIP and all those things. Okay, and also let me tell you one, one more time. You might be aware of what is LAN and what is WAN. So LAN means local area network within the campus, within, within your office network. So over here, you will 
bring up these protocols. Whereas WAN is wide area network. That is like when you are geographically uh, away. Okay, like, let's say you are geographically away, you are in one location and you want to connect to another location. So BGP, Border Gateway Protocol. So these are the name of the routing protocols. So if someone asks you in the interview, do you have any experience with any routing protocol? You can you can call out one of them, whichever you feel you're good. And uh, they might ask you in-depth question related to, to that. Okay, so sometimes they itself ask you, are you comfortable with EIGRP? Are you comfortable with OSPF? So if you say that I'm comfortable with EIGRP, the, the question should be asked on EIGRP then. Okay, but, but we never know. Sometimes some people will also try to ask you on OSPF. That is because might be they are using OSPF. So now their intention would be to see how good you are at your current organization and how good you would be once they have uh, recruited uh, in the next company, right? Okay, now let's check about the EIGRP. So EIGRP stands for Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. And it's a advanced vector protocol uh, following algorithm, advanced distance vector algorithm. It also follows a dual algorithm. These are some keywords which you need to remember for your interview. And also you remember this was a Cisco proprietary, but nowadays it's an open uh, source from 2013. It's an advanced distance vector protocol. That means a router is aware of the cost factor of the next uh, router, even though if they're not uh, connected to each other. So R1 is aware of the details of R3. That was a drawback in the case of RIP. In the case of RIP, they don't follow advanced distance vector. That means R1 is only aware of these two, but it is not aware of the next person. And there was chances that it was making a wrong calculation by passing it to a, uh, another point. So in an advanced distance vector, they are aware of the router who are not directly connected. And this is the scientist who discovered EIGRP, and this is the name given to it uh, for selection of the best path. EIGRP supports both IPv4 and IPv6. EIGRP will support VLSM and CIDR. What do you mean by VLSM? variable length subnet mask okay that means uh, you can have all this supported variable length and it also sends partial update and full update so full update is when there is some change in the network Otherwise, it will be only sharing the partial network. This is to avoid unwanted uh, uh, unwa unwanted uh, resources. Okay, to avoid unwanted uh, overhead on the devices, it will be only sharing partial. When there is a major update, then it will send the full update. This is the AD value. What do you mean by AD value? Or what do you mean by AD? AD refers to the trustworthiness of the protocol. Okay. That means, let's say if I had uh, this way, few routers connected, I'm learning this path over on OSPF and I'm learning this path over on EIGRP. Now, do you know what is the routing decision parameter? How is the router? How is the router going to make a routing uh, decision? 
should i send it via this or should i send via this do if anyone know having two routing if a uh, router having two routing protocol then uh, it will elect on uh, ad value of routing protocol in this scenario it will uh, elect eigrp okay oh, but sorry. in general what are the three decision makers count uh which one a ad value ad value uh, is here yeah for uh, what was the first one next hop no not next hop do you remember this word longest prefix match okay. and what is the third one third one bandwidth longest. no not bandwidth match metric or cost metrical yes so that's this okay now now what do you mean by longest uh, prefix match if anyone uh, aware of it's for uh, classes slash 32 or slash 24 so it's slash 30 on or slash 32 is the biggest one so it will choose it okay see for example i have a pc here 192.168.1.1 slash 24 and i have another pc at, uh, on the other side 192.168 uh one dot let's say 100/24 slash now when the packet ping packet is going to this uh, device r1 router 1 router 1 can take it to this way or it can take to this way okay now might be you have eigrp configured at one side you might be on the other side you have a ospf routing protocol configured so we know that ad value would make eigrp to favor and and due to the better ad, uh, administrative distance you might answer that this is via this path eigrp path but that's a wrong um, assumption you should also know what is the longest prefix match i mean is this is this aware of a very uh, accurate network let's say you are pinging something uh, 192.168 uh, 1.100/32 now this is the better route or better uh, longest prefix when compared to 192.168.1.100/24 uh, longest prefix match in the sense the one which is very accurate to the network it is in terms of C cidr value so slash /32 being the exact network is better than slash /24 now it will be checked upon whether this is via ospf and this is via eigrp let's assume that way now now what happens is now ad don't come into picture the first tie breaker is longest prefix match so it will go via this direction because of the lem longest uh, pre uh, prefix match lpm only if both the routing protocols are learning it via the same cidr value slash /24 and slash /24 then only comes the ad value and as per ad value eigrp will win the election and the third scenario could be let's say both the places it's eigrp you have eigrp eigrp it's slash /24 slash /24 now comes the cost cost in the sense if let's say there is a uh, ethernet uh, network somewhere and th this is a gig in ethernet this is gig ethernet and this is gig ethernet so the one with better costing will win the election 
and in case if it's also gig then you know the factor that eigrp supports equal cost uh, multiple paths that means both the path are going to sit in the routing table information or routing table both of them okay so that is what router will do so the internal ad value is been set to 90 the external ad value is set to 170 the hop count by default is 100 which you can tune to 255 it supports uh, both equal cost and uh, unequal cost balancing and uh, by default load balancing can happen over on four paths but you can manipulate to 32 hello timer of this protocol is 5 second and dead is 15 second the multicast ip address is 224.0.0.10 and it supports md5 and uh, the keychain and also the auto summarization is enabled so this is the basic understanding of eigrp it remains same in ccna ccnp and core and nrc and then the level keeps increasing the the further you go in the case of ccna you just learn very basic eigrp it might be the introduction part and the configuration but in the case of ccnp's nrc module you will learn about uh, summarization you you will learn about authentication authenticating the packets you will learn about uh, the unequal uh, path manipulations you learn about how to uh, manipulate the cost or how how to allow number of uh, unequal path you will also learn about how to manipulate the path what is the formula for eigrp to count or consider the cost factor so it's a it's a very uh, lengthy topic eigrp is a lengthy topic uh, so we will just break it down first to understand the basic then we will do a lab for it then we go to the intermediate level some labs and then we do the advanced portion okay so we are checking the basic class as of now then we will just uh, go into the next level of it so do you guys uh, know what are the eigrp tables see every every routing protocol will maintain certain tables why tables are important because routing protocol is a process and during the process of neighborship exchange deciding which route is best it will try to keep the records in respective table because next time if that main link is broken it can go back and take the backup link and put it on the main link that is what the work of routing protocol is the work of routing protocol is to avoid isolation your network becoming isolated it it's much faster uh, in terms of convergence let's say the primary link is down just within 90 second it will remove that primary link and put the uh, backup link as a primary link so it has to maintain few tables so one of them is neighborship table this is the first table that eigrp will come up with then comes the topology table so over here you will have all the links uh, that are backup links and the important link the main link will go to the uh, routing table this is where the best routes are kept and other than that you will have a neighbor table to see the neighborship a topology table and then finally the routing table routing table consists of only the good path do you guys uh, know how the metric is calculated 
So let's say if I have uh, this network diagram with me, how do I calculate the cost? Because this can be your interview question as well. If someone uh, if someone gives you network diagram and ask you to uh, come up with the cost factor, so how do you conclude it? So they have given you bandwidth, they have given you delay. So this is bandwidth and this is delay. Why have they given only bandwidth and delay? Because rest of the factors of EIGRP like uh, um, okay, that rest of the factors can be actually made uh, zero. So let me show you what are the things that can be made zero. The load can be zero. Reliability can be made zero. Why? Because by considering the constant values to be zero here. This is the complete full formula to find the cost. To find the cost, this is the full formula. But considering that some of the k values, k, k values are some constant uh, value. So considering some of the k values to be zero, if you see here, there is a zero here, there is a zero, zero here. The final summarized formula is this. This is the summarized formula. So during the interview, uh, interview, you if you even remember, this is okay because most of the time they will not get into uh, such uh, depth. But during the exam, there is chances that they can ask you the MCQ based uh, question that what are the factors that are uh, that that contribute to to the uh, metric calculation, and they might give you some four random answers and might be asked you to select three or four or five options. So that time might be this is important, but this is important from your interview point of view. Bandwidth plus delay into 256. So I I will show you where, where does this uh, can be found. This is our diagram, network uh, diagram. Let's say if I bring up one of the device. So always remember the uh, outgoing interface of the router is considered to calculate the metric. Okay, or the leaving interface of it. I'll just take the interface uh, stat of let's say Ethernet zero slash zero. Do you see this uh, interface ID here? This interface ID. Let me change the color of this. See this interface ID, right? So you need to check. What is the bandwidth and the delay on this on this link? So how do you check? Show interface Ethernet zero slash zero. So when you do that, this is where uh, this is where the bandwidth is. This is the bandwidth. This is the delay. So this is used in the EIGRP formula calculation. So basically the formula was bandwidth plus uh, delay into the constant uh, number, which gives you the EIGRP costing. Always remember in the case of uh, the metric calculation, it's the outgoing interface, which is checked for the bandwidth and the de uh, delay to calculate so let's say if this was the network, this router can take your packet via this or over this, correct? <clears throat> so it will check the bandwidth and delay at the outgoing interface. So it will see what is the bandwidth delay, what is the bandwidth delay. What is the bandwidth delay? Same over here. 
bandwidth delay. And then by considering the factors, longest prefix match, if it is same, then by checking the administrative distance, if that is also same, then it will check the cost. And let's say the total cost uh, comes to be uh, 100 and same over here as 100. Then both are good. Both the, uh, both the, both the directions are good. And both of them will be put up in the routing table. But for any reason, let's say the cost here was 100 and the cost on the second uh, direction was 200. Might be you're using an Ethernet uh, surface. Okay, so let's say if there are uh, two things. So if there are two things, then the cost is 100, cost is 200. Now only this will be put up in the routing table and this will be kept in the topology table, not in the routing table. Only when this link is down, might be this router due to power fluctuation has gone down. Then the second link will come into the routing table. Okay, so that is what happens in the case of routing protocol. Okay, let me show you the N N NRC uh, workbook here. So this is applicable for NRC because uh, as you know, in the N core, we don't have much lab. Only in the NRC portion, we have uh, uh, the more troubleshooting and more working on uh, protocol. So this uh, section, or EIGRP is consisting of uh, around uh, eight tasks. This is the diagram that we will consider for EIGRP. And over here, I'll first show you what do you mean by 64-bit EIGRP and uh, the named mode EIGRP, the uh, authentication, the EIGRP passive interface, configure hold time and hello packet for EIGRP, manipulate equal cost load balancing, configure EIGRP unequal cost using variance. Okay, this terms comes during the unequal cost uh, manipulation and a manual summarization <clears throat> and then manipulating the path using the K values. So these are an advanced lab. You don't see them in the CCNA. neither in Encore. It's uh, more like uh, the NRC topic, advanced routing topic uh, which includes this and for the lab purpose we are making use of our uh, our built-up lab topology that is this one so this is a this is the this is a massive lab which will have all the protocol that we can test uh, starting with switching stp dtp mst Ether channels, HSRP, GLBP, VRRP, okay, all from the switching side. And from the routing protocol, almost every protocol that we can test. And uh, for BGP, I've created some uh, very detailed uh, scenarios as well. So we would be, we would be performing some uh, basic B BGP over here, IBGP, EBGP, so. And then for all the different uh, path manipulation, created different scenarios here. BGP configuration, this will be BGP configuration. And uh, this will be for the MED. This is also one for one of the BGP related tasks. You can see the IBGP route reflector, IBGP full mesh. This is also a topic uh, related to the BGP. And uh, the DM VPN and all those things will be here. DM VPN, site to site VPN, GRE tunnel, all that things over here. And over here, this is the section for OSPF. And also there are some OSPF uh, that would be discussed in this section. 
for eigrp is this section basically i have to do some uh, modification on this because on our workbook this section is bit different and on the topology it is different so today we will see how to add delete and how to make our own changes on the existing um, diagram you can create a new for yourself also we have given you the permission of creating a uh, new environment or if you are also making any suitable adjustment you can do it over here as well so today we will be like checking the emulator so that we know how this emulator is work so this is ospf this is ospf this is virtual link ospf this is spanning tree mst dtp ether channel uh, and all those things hsrp vrrp glbp at this point okay so almost every protocols that we would be completing here in the encore and rc would be applicable on this topology and also if you do some basic ccna that as well you can do it here otherwise for ccna we also have another uh, topology if in case you want to brush up your ccna knowledge we will also give you that access so that you can go through it and i think i have uh, some um some ccna material also with me some very small labs if in case you want to also do a very 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 small labs topic by topic i i will share that also let me let me show you uh, that material as well so that is for someone who who needs some time to to get the things up. if you are already ccna ccnp and uh, not looking for that you can skip it so let me just show you one one small uh ppt i have created which is having like uh, more than 100 uh, ccna exercises so it's very simple just put two device three device and uh, you can uh, come up with your uh, practical so for example some basic switch lab if you want to create uh like uh, setting up host name enable password ip ping test etc with two devices so this is the configuration for vlan if you want to test some scenarios this is what a small topology you can prepare and you can you can make use of this configuration okay so this is having around uh, some 100 uh, test uh, cases the small gre tunnel and the config for this very 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 uh, you know from ccna point of view but when you go to ccnp you don't expect uh, your lab topology will be this simple okay your your scenarios would be like this interconnected networks so one one ask could be somewhere at one point might be the next task they might ask you in this might be the third as they ask you to do something on this so the level has increased when you go towards ccnp okay ccna is very uh, basic whatever you learn whatever you want to configure you can you can do it i'll i'll add this uh, file on our uh, learn portal itself so that you can take it uh, from there before uh, static nat some exercises and its answer dynamic nat configure verify and troubleshoot the basic device hardening so again setting up some uh, local authentication logging license all that okay so i'll just give you don't worry okay now we will first see uh, for the uh, eigrp topic as i told there is let's say in the exam uh, they ask you to prepare this section for uh, eigrp okay they will give you the network diagram and ask you to prepare uh, it so first let me take the uh, screenshot because it will be helpful for us to refer
How many guys have worked on uh, EVNG or GNS? You guys have worked on these emulators? Anyone worked on this? Yes, no. Do you guys yeah, have worked in... on GNS3? Okay, GNS3, okay. What about others? Uh, oh, I'm yeah. using EV. Sorry? EVNG. Okay. Yeah, EVNG, GNS, they are all okay. But uh, packet tracer will not work, okay? I mean, that is only till CCNA level, not for CCNP level. So when you, whenever you're creating your own network, you, you just keep them uh, side by side. If you have dual monitor concept of, or if you have a print option, then that's uh, much better. Now, since I have to share my uh, screen, I'm, I'm just keeping it side by side. So we are just going to recreate the image that I have on one side on the, uh, on this section. Okay. This, this particular section. So for, we might have to delete few things. Let's uh, delete few things first so that I can, I can bring up to this uh, extent. So we, we need few devices, right? So I need only routers as of now. I don't need uh, uh, the switches. The switches are being identified with that uh, square box and uh, routers are kept in a circle around the uh, kind of concept okay. so do we do we have any switch here no we don't need any switch i'll delete it so i have one device i will keep it like this so three device and let's say one of them and to increase this shape okay we can recreate it i'll show you how do we recreate this box now okay, let me bring it here We'll just create a new box here. So you go to text and uh, on the very uh, left side, there is a square uh, of square shape, right? So just click that, then go to background. You can set any background of your choice. I'll try to keep as uh, similar to our workbook so that it will be uh, easy for you to refer and uh, put some border okay and you can increase uh, the width or whatever you want to do it So I can see this box here. It has taken me very good number of time to create this more than uh, might be six to eight months. All this topology, all the things in place, the IP schema, the naming to this. We are just doing a small block as of now. Okay. We are just preparing one single block as of now. So this is how you bring it and just keep it wherever you want. Keeping them separated by section will help you to identify wherever whichever section you are going to work. And uh, you can see that some things are getting uh, uh, hidden because of this box. So you just put this 
tend to back and then you can rearrange the thing so you might be you keep uh, one device here the second device over here the third one here the fourth device to this um i think we can take off one cable for now how, how do we connect the cables so for that you refer the topology so if you see the topology i have uh, uh let's say this is zero slash one to zero slash one on the upper side right so i will drag the cable and drop the cable then I'll select 0, 1, 0, 1 on both the sides. This is because my my workbook is based on this. So I don't want to make any uh, confusion by connecting it to a wrong interface ID. And over here, it is uh, Ethernet 0 slash 2 and 0 slash 2. So let me put it on Ethernet 0 slash 2. And then it's Ethernet 0 slash 3 and Ethernet 0 slash 3. So let's select the 3. And uh, what else? Uh, let me keep this here. So 3 and 3 on the router. Let's say this is 3 and Ethernet slash 3. And then I'll go with 0 and 0, Ethernet 0 and 0. Correct me if I might be overlooking on some anything. Just you can let me know so that we can fix it at the same time. And uh, this looks uh, to be wrong ID. We will keep it to 0 slash uh, 2 and 0 slash 2. So let me connect like this. I'll put it, uh, okay, now it's connected to somewhere else. We will take out that cable, right click and delete it. So let's connect this to 0 slash 2, 0 slash 2. Save this. Okay, and what else it say? There is some loopback, uh, etc. Uh, basically, loopbacks are nothing but on the same device, you can have some loopback configured. Just for my identification, I uh, mentioned it as a loop. So now it's it's matching, right? It's to some extent it's matching. And for this type of naming, uh, if in case you have, you are supposed to add this naming, there is a text uh, available. You can just add those text and make it refer. And uh, do you see the IP that is being added? We can add those IPs as well. We can also add the device name onto it. So, so usually I keep my device names uh, based on some city names because it looks a uh, bit uh, easy to remember. So this section was called as uh, Tokyo, Tokyo site. So let's say Tokyo R7. So Tokyo R7, then we have, uh, what is this, Tokyo 29, to Tokyo 30, Tokyo R12, and uh, Tokyo 7, done. Tokyo 10, I think this is Tokyo 10. We will put it as Tokyo 10. Always keep your diagram neat and uh, clean and with all the labels. So it will be helpful for you to refer. I'll also label the next one as uh, Tokyo 29. Then we have Tokyo 12. That is this one. Tokyo 12. And then the final router that we would have is uh, Tokyo R30. Okay, easy to remember.
those who would not be able to do this i will be sharing you my file you just upload it uh, uh, upload on your side and uh, that should be sufficient okay if in case you still didn't get this or someone who is running short of time i'll i'll be sharing you my file as well okay now what next uh, if you want to put this kind of uh, small line you can go to line and uh, let's say you can select um one of the you can select this red color apply so do, you, do you see this do you see this small line that has been found and just keep like this so this is how i uh, created at that point of time and if you somehow want to change any feature of that you can still do that go to edit and you can increase the width of it okay so you can see here the width is being increased and uh, i'll show you how to put the text on the section so for text you just uh, right click text and uh, see the box has been come up here and whatever uh, ip schema that we are following i think this is in the range of 192 168 and there are there are quite a bit network here because they are all routers so if you see carefully uh, this this network sorry if you see this this is a different set of network 10 10.0 network this is 40.0/20 network this is 30 series this is 50 series this is 20 series and this is 60 series okay see carefully the ip that is been assigned 10 series 40 series 20 series 50 series 30 series and 60 series so you can put this label with the help of uh, right click text then 192 168 uh, 10.1/24 make this box a bit smaller so you have it here okay usually what i do is i just uh, clone them with the help of uh, right click and duplicate instead of always uh, you know uh, be dependent on the right click so that that's bit easier uh, sometimes for me so i have put 10.1 similar way let's say i will keep it for 10.2 so this is 10.2 you bring your uh, first label to this and the second label on to this okay now it's clear right so when whenever you are practicing if the labels are just in front of you 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 find it much convenient so i put 10 series let me put 40 uh 40 i'll also create its uh, peer ip so 
So what we don't do. I'll also create 30.1 and 30.2. 30 30.1. I know it's pretty small font. Uh, uh, you guys may not be able to see, but sometimes some things you have to do it. Otherwise, it will be all over your topology and uh, you will not be able to create them properly. So let's say this is 2, 30.2. Uh, let me place 40 now. So let's say this is 40. And this is forty dot two. Let's say this is forty dot two. You can also go with uh, dot one dot two if in in case you find that there is no space. However, you want you can keep it. Ultimately, uh, the thing is that it's all about your learning. I'll put it for 50 series. Fifty dot one. This is 50.2. Okay, I'm left. I'm left with the uh, two more networks and then we are good to bring them up. So 10 is done, 30 is done, 40 is done, 50 is done, 20 is not done. 20 network is here. Let me duplicate and make 20.1. 20.1. And uh, we need 60.1. Okay. That would be the last one. I, I I'll be uh, zooming in in some time. Just just give me some time. This is sixty dot. Okay, I think we are good with the labels. Now it's time to arrange them. Hope you guys can see now better. If you want, I can make it still bigger. Okay. So this is where, uh, let's say dot two. I'll keep thirty dot two here. Thirty dot one, thirty dot two, then we will have uh, sixty. Sixty dot one. Okay, sixty dot one, sixty dot two, twenty dot one, twenty dot two, and this is fifty dot one. This would be fifty dot two. So these IPs are on to be set on the interfaces. Okay, so if you see now. See, these are the IP addressing. And if you want to keep uh, the loop back, you can just set that loop back.
Okay, now we will bring up the nodes. So this is one simple example I showed you. If in case you are recreating your uh, production scenario or if you want to test it out um, some some theoretical topic or or something this is how we put the nodes we cable them we name them we assign the ip address so we have basically not assigned it uh, from the configuration point we are just put the labels so that it will be easy for us later on while we uh, troubleshoot or well we do the show commands we get to know where this ips are belonging to now how do you bring this uh, devices up and running you just right click and click start we can see the led icons of these have been uh, uh, turned blue now right so that means they are in the booting phases. So they are in the uh, boot, uh, booting uh, sequence. Allow it some time and you will see all these things getting booted up. So from the work uh, book of ours, if you see any, any places there, there is a missing label or IP, feel free to add so that you can uh, play around with this emulator. See, this has come up. So do you started to see the initial dialogue here. See, this has also come up. The dialogues are seen. You'll see over here as well. So when you see uh, if there is no boot up sequence, you can double type on the enter button. See. It will take you in. For well, some people, what they do, uh, they keep waiting for some text to appear. So when you see the initial dialogue, we will not be configuring anything from the initial di dialogue. We will be doing our manual configuration. So you can type no and come out of these mode. So this is now box, the device, Cisco device, and we are pending to do with the configuration. And I uh, always try to keep it in the notepad because uh, uh, sometimes the device we might have to reboot uh, to occur some, uh, to, to adopt some uh, things, right? Or sometimes we might done some mistake with the IP uh, configurations or, or typo. So if we have it in a piece of notepad, it it's it's very easy for us to validate. You can also use in your uh, exams, like CCI exams, you, you can use your notepad when you're uh, making use of uh, the scenario questions and keep it. So usually I will prefer to have uh, a notepad. And over here, we we can prepare a fresh configuration. So let's say this is EIGRP. Let me increase the font size. What do we have now? Now we have Tokyo R7. So first, we will start with uh, Tokyo configuration. So first thing is that to bring up the EIGRP, a basic EIGRP. And for that, we need... Uh, the basic uh, initial IP addressing and uh, the host name configuration. So let's say this is Tokyo R7. You can write the config because now this is a section for EIGRP. Might be today we would be practicing few labs and tomorrow we might need to have uh, the need of the same IP address. So why do you want to uh, wipe it or flush it off? So I will show you how to also store this config in the device. Uh, so that next time you don't have to do that basic initial configuration. So you put the host name <clears throat> on the interface level. We will configure uh, the IPs. So first put no shutdown. Then you check the lab topology. That is why having the labels help you. 
otherwise you have to refer workbook each and every time so now the ips are in front of you so you are either configuring this as of now the first uh, first ethernet port so it's uh, what 10 series right so 192 168 10.1 255255250 you can put description and all those things within interface level but that's okay okay now we go to the second ethernet that is uh, this one and then we will do this so this will be completed then we can pick up the second device we will configure this we will configure this this would be done then we can pick up uh, let's say this guy this router i'll configure this so this is done then i'll pick up this one i'll do both and this would be completed and finally the third one we would be done okay so i'll just keep typing it uh, in a fast mode so don't lose yourself i'm just going to write it a bit quicker quickly so that we can test it a uh, few things today so 192 168 40.1 255 255 255 0 uh, interface 0 slash 3 no shutdown ip address 192 168 20.1255255255.0 now we will move to if you want to create a loopback feel free to you can also create loopback let's say uh, i will call it as 1.1.1255255255050 uh, there is no need of no shutdown because these are software based interfaces uh, that means by default they would be always on then we go to the second guy that is let's say tokyo r10 and uh, we have zero slash one zero slash one let's say no shutdown to this ip address 192 168 10.2 0 slash 3, no shutdown, IP address 192.168.30.2, okay, and then we will do write map so that the interface configuration remains, even though we restart or we come back, we don't need to do the things over and over at least the initial ones okay i'll go to the next router 29 0 slash 2 this is going to be no shutdown One ninety two one sixty eight. this is 40 dot 2 Two five five two five five two five five zero. Then zero slash zero IP address one ninety two one sixty eight fifty dot one two five five two five five two five five zero. No shutdown. Okay, and uh, we have uh, yes, we will do right now. Let's go to the Tokyo router to bar. Interface kick. Sorry, it's Ethernet. Ethernet 0 slash 3, no shutdown. IP address 192, 168, 20.2, 255255250, 0 slash 2. No shutdown. IP address 192, 168, 60.2, 255, 255, 255, 0. And write them. 
and finally the last router of this network topology that is interface 0 slash 3 no shutdown IP address 192, Okay, I'm almost done. Right to my zero three zero two. Okay, ten fifty. See now, what is the reason to write it in Notepad and then bring it to the devices? If we would have done something straightforward on the device, it becomes too difficult for us to troubleshoot on the later stage. So now, just we need to copy this, right? So I'll just copy this and uh, come to the first device i have already shown you how do this copy paste work control shift alt keep it here text input and uh, come come inside the configuration t terminal and paste the configuration block see now it's happening with the help of uh, right mem this is now in the device permanent until you don't wipe it manually or you don't delete something yourself. Otherwise, it will be in the device. Now I'll go to the second uh, device that is Tokyo 10. Same thing, Control Shift Alt, keep it here. Text input, paste it. Okay. So this is Tokyo 10. Then we go to Tokyo R29. R29 done. Then we go to R12. Okay, see, there's some mistake here. IP address 192.168.20.2. Well, let's see what image it is. Oh, it seems to be L2. See, these are L3. So there is a problem with the uh, one of the image. But uh, but for for now, I'll just uh, do some uh, do some way to make it uh, act as a router. Now, later later, uh, I will make the needful changes and uh, give you the new technology. So we can just add the no switch port. So that interface are capable of routing. See now it has taken up, right? I I'll delete it later and I'll uh, do the next thing. Right now let's focus on EIG. Put the config here. Text input. Okay, so we are good with the basic interface configuration.
So how do we verify if the things are good? Show IP int brief. Uh, we have the IPs. It's in the up, up status. Show IP int brief, up status. Show IP int brief, up status. Show IP int brief, up status. And show IP int brief, their up status. Okay. Now, the whole purpose of routing protocol is that the networks are known to each other. Because as of now, they're not known to each other. If you, if you are, if you are standing here or if you are behind this guy, you may not be aware of this network or similar way. You're not aware of this. You might be aware of the directly connected, but not aware of the far away networks you can check that if you go to the r7 router if you do this command show ip route you can see what it is aware of see what it is aware of it is aware of 10 20 and 40. so this is 10 this is 40 this is 20. is it aware of 30 network or 60 network no it is not so how does, if a computer is a behind this, how does that computer can uh, ping to a computer who could be behind uh, this guy, R30? He, he will be not able to, right? So that is why I created that loopback called 4.4.4. So if I try to ping 4.4.4, so it will, it will drop because it doesn't know where it is. We can we can create that loop back. Might be I may not have created that. Let's create that loop back somewhere at this point. Interface loop back one IP address four dot four dot four two five five two five five two five five zero. So this is like for our testing purpose. Let's see now this is this is there on the device. But will this be able to reach him? He will be not able to reach. Only this router can only ping to the directly connected interface only. Till this. So this is only having the reachability till here. Now behind this, if there is any computers, then it doesn't know how to reach. So what is the method? We can go with static routing. I can say to this uh, router, if anything comes to 4.4.4, .4 send it to this. Then I'll go here. I'll put a static routing. If anything comes to 4.4.4, .4 push it to this. Then I'll put a written traffic also. If anything is uh, coming from 1.1.1 to 4.4.1, .4 it has to go back. So I'll say that 1.1 should go back to this and 1.1 should go back to this. And then this guy will be able to uh respond back so ping consists of two packet request and reply so you need to have the direction for both if you only have one side facing your your reply will be lost then and then that ping is also not successful ping so ping has to be two sided that is request and reply if you are only keeping care of request, but not reply, then that ping is not successful. You should also make a way to have the request come back. So that's called a successful ping result. And that is what we were to, uh, concluding today. It is not fair enough to have static routing in the network. If it is a single server, might be on, on one side, then you're dropping a static route. Okay, it's fine. But not when there are like user to user communication and you want to prefer going with static route because that will be too much of manual effort for you. Now, there is a problem with static route. Now, let's say you have the static route and for some reason, this is down. So do you think in your off shift hours or in uh, during the uh, uh, night hours or during your uh, vacation, do you think when this goes down, you will walk into office and put a static route manually thinking that uh, uh, this is down and I, I will put this part. So that is not feasible, right? You need something which is proactively 
converging. If this link do, goes down, it will bring the second link in the routing table and, and it will be giving you a successful ping result. If, if the second link is also going down, you will have the third uh, path and it will come up to the routing table. So these routers are maintaining a routing table within them. All the best path will be kept in the routing table. So one goes down, the second will come up. That is what the routing protocol does. The work of protocol is to keep a smoother transmission of this packet throughout the network. And they keep learning the network throughout. They will also keep exchanging their, their, themselves uh, to whatever network they know they will be advertising to the other uh, neighbors. So that's a sequence that happens here. Now in the next step, what we will do, we will bring up the EIGRP concept. Okay. So we will put a EIGRP concept here and we will advertise all the networks that I'm aware on them. So let's say the second step is to enable EIGRP. There are two ways to configure EIGRP. One is a classic method and the second one is called uh, the named method. So I'll just give you one example for uh, named method. Router EIGRP, let's say network journey. This is called named method. And over here you go with the command address family IPv4 unicast autonomous system 150 and then you advertise all your network let's say from the first router perspective you are aware of 10 40 and 20 so you advertise all of them 192 168 10.0 network 192 168 40.0 network 192 168 20.0 you can advertise this. You might also have seen, they can also be uh, classified or also be configured uh, with the default behavior. Okay. Instead of the 64 bit named EIGRP, you can also go with the classic method. So they work the same. It's just that in your NRC topic, there is a mention of 64-bit named and uh, the classic method. So that's why we just check from that point of view. Otherwise, it, it's almost the same. So let me show you one with the classic method. So let's say if this is for... Tokyo 7. Tokyo 7, I configured with the 64-bit uh, named method. If in case I want to configure it on the second uh, router, which is let's say 10, using the classic method, I'll go with router EIGRP. I'll give a autonomous system. Let's say this is my autonomous system. And I'll advertise all the networks that I am I'm aware on this device on this so i'm aware of 10 and i'm aware of 30 right so my statement would be network 192 168 10.0 network 192 168 30.0 okay and similar way i'll put up for 29 what are the networks that i'm aware on 29 which network do you think I'm aware on 29 now? 40 and 50. Yes, 40 and 50. So I'll put 40 and 50. What about the next uh, router? That is for 12. What am I aware of? 20 and 60. 20 and uh, 60. And finally, the final router? 40. 30, 50, 60. Yeah, here I'm aware of uh, 30, 50, 60, right? So 30, 50, and uh, 60. If in case you're advertising uh, your loopback, 
then put that network also. So 168.60.0. Let's say here I have my uh, uh, 4.4. series. So I'm going to mention that. Uh, and same thing if in case you wanted to advertise one dot series just for a ping from Tokyo 30 to 30 R7, then better to advertise that. So whatever networks you want to be available when you ping it. So from here, you want to ping something which is at this point, then you should have advertised that network within this. Then only this will come to know, right? That 10, 10 is located. We will see that. We will see. If a new network comes up, I'll show you how does it uh, been to be added and how that will send the uh, uh, topology change notification or update packet. And that network will be now aware to all this guys, all this five uh, devices. So first let's configure. So I'll take for the first one. Let's go to the config D, put the configuration. Okay. Similar way, let's go to the R10. Let's go to R29. R12. R30. Okay. So you can see that there are some messages, log messages, dual neighborship change, EIGRP IPv4 neighbors is up new agency see it just took what uh two seconds to 10 seconds and now they are already become neighbor they have already exchanged their own information to each other how do i check that so if i go back to my r7 who was not aware of 4.4.4 sometime back correct so he was not aware of 4.4.4 right So let's see if this network is there in this device or not. And we will also see what are the neighbors first. So let's see if the neighbors are built or not. So show IP EIGRP neighbor table. See, now what is happening? This guy was considered for the named topology, for the named uh, concept, whereas others are classic. Let's see what do we have uh, on the other side. See, the neighbors are formed here. But on this side, you don't have the neighbors. That's because it's on a... It's, it's not configured in the classic method. Show IP route. See, you don't have any EIGRP route. Whereas if you see on the other devices, see, do you see the protocol code as a D here? What is D stands for? So these are the network that is learned over on routing protocol EIGRP. That means this router is aware of any XY network due to the help of EIGRP protocol. So you see here for this router, 4.4 .4 is visible. How? Because of EIGRP. It is aware of 20 series network. Where is 20 series in this? See, they're not even directly connected. See the distance, but still 20 is learned. How? Because of EIGRP. So this protocol code shows you how these networks were learned. But in the case of first one, it is not having any, any information. It, it do not even have uh, the neighbor setup. That is because they are both different set of configuration that we had enabled. 
okay this is considered as a 64 bit uh, configuration when you when you start with the named configuration that comes under 64 bit eigrp configuration whereas these things are different they are classic you can check by taking up the capture if you open let's say one of the capture let's say on 0 slash 1 and also if you have started on the other side on the same 0 slash 1 you can see you can see the eigrp packet that is trying to flow so this is let's keep it somewhere in the bit corner so you have the eigrp cisco eigrp let me increase the font size see it is it is sending the hello packets over on dot 10 but they are of a different uh, pattern you see address family you will see uh, a different sort of structure let me also open up in the classic method in the hey, classic hello. yeah go ahead uh, yeah, sorry, you, I think, again, I have a lag of, lag of 5 to 10 seconds, you know, today as well, from quite some time. Uh, the screen presented, right, and the audio? Yes, sir. Okay. It is somehow delayed today. Okay. Just now it happened, or it is happening? So it's there from quite some time, actually. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't uh, get to know that. Okay, I will see, I will, I will see. Might be my internet due to the rain that's happening. Okay. I'll go a bit slower so you don't miss it. So if you see on the both side, the patterns are a bit different. So let me take up for the packet which initiated by uh, 10.2. So 10.2 is this. Ten dot two. Okay, one thing I can try that that is just to just to make things look good. I'll keep the autonomous system one, and we will see if they can become a neighbor. So with that, we will conclude whether named and classic can form neighborship or not. Okay, because the autonomous I kept one fifty, and on the rest of the places I kept it one one. So now your doubt will be um, your 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 query or your doubt might be narrowed down by considering whether autonomous systems are creating a problem or the named sixty four bit versus classic is uh, making this problem. So I'll go back to R seven, go to configuration mode. Okay, now it says that changing from AS is not allowed so and so what I'm going to do I'm going to remove them first no router EIGRP network journey okay and then I'll put the new new configuration with the autonomous one See, now it has come up. So what is what is your observation for now? After the validation, after fixing something, what is your observation? So How are neighbors formed? Number AS numbers to be? Same. Means uh, we, different AS number will not communicate. Correct. So AS numbers to be same across different uh, routers participating in the EIGRP neighborship. And what is the second observation that you find here? The 64-bit named can form EIGRP with classic EIGRP. Correct. So whenever you do come across a theoretical concept, you have to lab it 
and then prepare your notes as an observation that you might have found out from that practical. Now you go back and uh, we were testing out some ping, right? So I'll first try to do a ping here. Sorry. See, there is a reachability now. The one which was failing some time back. Now we will try to validate uh, it by going in depth to all the tables one, one by one. So over here, I'll do show IP route. Do we have 4.4.1? Yes, we will have it. So do you see this? And also, do you see a strange pattern? So your device R Tokyo 7 to the PC, which is, uh, I think it was Tokyo R30 and a PC, which is 4.4.4.4. It says that it is being identified via EIGRP protocol, but on top, what other information you get to know? What, what does this mean? Who wants to decode the meaning of this? Three routes, different routes are available. Yes, there are three routes that is being found. Okay, so it can go via 40.2. It can go via 20.2 and also it can go 10.2. These are equal cost. How do you come to know whether it's equal cost? You can see the things here. So this is an AD value. If you remember in the routing table, I was talking about uh, the tables. Uh, right. If you don't remember, let me once show you. That is why uh, always keep referring uh, to the notes that's prepared. I'll, I'll show you that. So this is a routing table I'm showing right now, right? So you might then ask me, I have not explained it sometime back. So I want to show you that I have done it. Uh, it should be somewhere here. Yeah, it is here. So if you see this, 90 is the AD value and 3072 is the total. This is the metric total distance to get the destination. Uh, do, you see, do you see this parameter? I'm talking about this value. So this is AD value and this is the total cost uh, to the desti uh, destination. So we'll go back. So here, if you see this, this is the same cost across on all the three parts. That is 409600, etc. Because it's an Ethernet uh, uh, interface, right? So definitely the cost is taking it in this way. And this is the outgoing interface. So if you open up your topology, you will see them uh, 0 slash 1, 0 slash 2, 0 slash 3, correct? So always the outgoing interface are important in terms of uh, the cost uh, metric calculation outgoing you make any changes to the outgoing interface might be you manipulate bandwidth you manipulate delay then the things will go in a different shape and that we are going to cover okay it comes under advanced uh, EI, uh, eigrp classes so in the next class we will do the manipulation of it Show IP EIGRP neighbor. This is the first thing that you need to check. Uh, you have the neighbor with these three devices. Then you have the EIGRP topology. This is all your uh, passive network. That means if something, basically topology is all the network that is kept here. Okay, so you can see here, now the values are changed. So one is success, the success factor and one is the uh, adv advertising distance. Okay. And this is a feasible distance. So I will tell you what does that mean. C 
see this is the one topology table so under the topology table you will find uh, the ft you will find ad and ft ft so ad means ad ft okay then you have something called successor and feasible successor these are the different naming terminologies that we use ad ft successor feasible successor so ad means the cost to reach the destination you can call it as ad or rd this is to reach the destination cost to reach the destination ft means feasible distance means sorry ad and rd means the cost from the neighbor router to reach the destination okay that is one important thing neighbor router to reach the destination whereas ad is the total cost from the exact device to reach the destination so that means if i have r1 r2 and r3 this cost will be ad cost ad cost or rd cost so that is basically from the neighbor device to reach the destination but if you want to see the total cost from r1 r2 r3 that is fd feasible distance the total cost to reach the destination successor is the primary route if you have a primary link in the routing table that's called a successor feasible successor is the backup route it may not be in the routing table but it will be in the topology table and only when the primary links goes down then this feasible successor will become a successor successor okay ad fd successor feasible successor four names that is that is why because your topology table will keep that calculation you have fd fd means the total cost to this there is one successor one one this is the primary link you have ad see the ad value ad is 128256 and uh, fd is uh, 156160 ad will be smaller always that is because it is from your neighbor to the destination whereas fd itself from from that particular to the destination and in in between you will have the neighbor also so all together this will be a bit higher than this value so this you see in the uh, topology table so in case if someone ask you what are this value then you should be aware of it so you can see that there is a uh, <clears throat> there they say ad value here these are ad value the one which i am highlighting now let me use another color see these are uh, these are ft value these are ft and uh, ad are this from the neighbor to the uh, destination whereas this is from itself from himself himself then to the neighbor then to the destination so definitely that will be a bit bigger than uh, the ad value and one successor that means one primary link here and here you see that there are three success successor that means three primary link tomorrow what i am going to do i am going to modify or manipulate the uh, things i am going to make a bandwidth manipulation or i might make uh, some other changes and then we will come and check the observation at this point so you will see that they might have lost its uh, behavior they would not be as uh, predictable as what you see today okay so this is second table and the final table is the routing table so over here you will see all the best route so you see that there is a equal cost uh, being supported you have another network and so on okay now i wanted to show you one more thing let's say if a new network comes up okay there is a new network that is been connected so how much time it might take to have it so let's say 
now there is nothing for uh, 10 series right so let's let's add one uh, network let me first initiate a ping 